Hello and welcome to the platform, a new media forum that focuses on the next generation network solutions marketplace. I'm Neil Axelrad, CEO of GCS, and I'll be your host as we explore the challenges that carriers are facing and what solutions might be available to help them meet those challenges. Today, I'm with Jay Moranchek. He's the CTO, president, and founder of GCS. Hey, Jay. How are you? Hey, Neil. Good. How are you? I'm, I'm well. So, um, Jay, um, do us a favor, and um, I'm a little bit biased on this, obviously, but I've, I've watched the architecture of, of the technology being built over the years. I think it's pretty amazing. Kind of give me some insight into that technology, what you developed, and, and kind of what you think makes it special as a, you know, as a CTO and the architect. Okay, Neil. We have, re we have revolutionized the way telecom carriers run their operations. Uh, in, the, in today's telecom world in wholesale, it is no longer feasible to manage all your routes and all your carriers and all your rules associated with them and then all the dynamic databases that have to be involved in that as well and build a static route LCR at some point in time and then try to push that that into the network. It's just the networks were never made to handle that. It is just too large and there's not and there is too much information to try to build a, a static route table at a certain point in time. So what we have done is we have built a dynamic route server that basically can scale to any size because we don't build an LCR table. What we do is we use the processing power of the available to the computers today in order to crunch all the tables, all the external, internal and external rules, all the, uh, no matter how deep your routing is, and basically come back on a call by call basis with the correct routing for that call where the network queries our system for the routing. So, so that's an obvious benefit because you're able to crunch more data. The more and more data that comes in from different sources, it's important to be able to uh, regurgitate that data and push it out into the network. So specifically, how does that, how does that actually work? Yeah, so um, a call comes into, the, your SB, into your network, whether it's an SBC or a soft switch. That becomes a network component that is now, does, when, we, you enter our, when you put our solution in, it becomes a network component that is doing now what it was designed to do. Handle sessions, manage sessions, manage endpoints, um, uh, do call admission control. You're not trying to make it do all the other things that it wasn't intended to do, which is the intelligence layer. We are the intelligence layer. If on a call-by-call -call basis, that system query signals to our system. This is who's sending me the phone call. Here's the phone call. How do I route it? And basically, our system does everything else and, and basically sends back the five routes or the ten routes, whatever it may be, in the order that that system needs to route. So that, that's all great from a technology perspective, but why is that better? Well, it's better for multiple reasons. Number one is that, that, that in order to be profitable, you need to be able to go deeper and deeper in your routing, how you route. You need to normalize how you buy and how you sell. That, you, know, you need to get all that information into network components that can't handle it. So it can't handle it for multiple reasons. Number one is it just can't, it, if you can get it in there, by the time you get it in there, it's been massaged in some way. It doesn't even resemble what commercial wanted it to look like. And number two, every time you try to put it in there, you put a risk on the component, the network component, um, and then also the network components don't scale anymore. You know, these things were designed to do 10,000 concurrent calls, 15,000 concurrent calls. When you're trying to put all that information in there, they can't do that anymore. So we're talking about technology and, and engineering. It's just a better engineered network, pulling out all the intelligence and letting the, the endpoints do what they need and to. From do. day one, I've always been an advocate. Build your components to do what they were supposed to do and let them do that. Don't try to do everything in a single component. Mm -hmm. You specialize in, in switching, you switch. You specialize in routing, you route. You specialize in rating, you rate and you have each component do what they're supposed to do. So, so kind of switching gears a little bit, we've, um, we've deployed, you know, um, you know, 60 some odd, close to 70 uh, customers. We've done that with, you know, international based customers, domestic based customers. Give me a little flavor of what you think from, again, from a CTO's perspective, a success story um, from one of our customers. Yeah, so our most interesting success story, or one of the most interesting one is our one of our first customers who is still a customer of ours. They, and they're, they're originally, we solved the basic problem with them. They, they needed dynamic routing because their network 
they could not route to the level of complexity that they needed to route to for Mexico specifically at that time. Um, they couldn't route to the level of complexity they needed to route to. So we enabled them to do that. And then the next thing was they started using all the features available to us and it basically allowed them to change routing instantaneously. It allowed them to route to any level. Uh, they were, uh, their, their network components stopped crashing. They were able to scale them. They didn't need to buy more network components to handle the same level of network. They were able to grow their network. And then now two years later, yeah, two years later, mm -hmm. we enabled this company who was an international wholesaler to become a domestic carrier with full jurisdictional, full LMP, right on the same system. Uh, and, you know, this was a carrier that didn't have expertise in that area. We provided them with all the tools in the toolbox necessary in order to go from international to domestic jurisdictional based LMP routing um, and do it successfully right out of the box. So as little as... Uh Four years ago, that would have taken a DMS 250 translation text, 20 guys. We did that with, with uh, and, and probably $5 million, right? So, so I think we did that pretty cost effectively for these guys. Very cost effectively. And they did the learning curve. It was a, you know, a couple week learning curve. It wasn't a multi year learning curve. Interesting. That's cool. So, what's, uh, what, what's next on the, on the horizon for, for GCS? What have you been thinking about? So we're, we're focusing in on the ability to interface with more and different types of switches. Um, we, we've started out with a SIP-based route server. Uh, we're moving into, um, into other arenas uh, with a SIGTRAN adapter. Um, we've enabled our stack to support enum so that it can actually do queries before LC, building LCR. Uh, we're looking, um, and that's and those are the things that we're heading in. Uh, in uh, mobile it's number, a lot. Mobile <laughs> number, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> mobile number portability in different countries. We were one of three uh, providers to provide a solution for India mobile number portability, and now we're looking to do that in other countries as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, thanks. Um, I appreciate the time. We're uh, I'm Neil Axelrad, and uh, thanks for coming on the platform today. You're welcome. Good to be here.